Okay then, so today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the latest release of MU Deck for Windows, which is of course now absolutely free, and it has been since December 2023. So I'm going to be showing you the entire process of this, how to actually set it up, how to install it, how to add some games and some BIOS files. I'm also going to be showing you some other things such as installing your own theme. So there's a lot to learn in this very awesome latest release of MU Deck for Windows. Check this one out. Okay, before I start today's MU Deck for Windows setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide like this one today, and it also helps my channel a lot too. So, what is MU Deck and what is MU Deck for Windows? So, obviously, MU Deck was released for the Steam Deck, which is very awesome. And it was also released for MU Deck for Windows. So originally this was a Patreon subscription, but in December when I last covered this, it was actually free, just like it is today. So let's get on with this. What we need first is Steam. Steam is crucial in order to run MU Deck for Windows. And of course, Steam is free. So all you need to do to get Steam is just head over to the Steam website, and I'll leave the link in my description, but it's pretty easy to find, and just install Steam. It will ask you for a username, a password, and an email you confirmation. But Steam's a good app anyway for PC gaming. I use it a lot. So next thing we're going to need is MU Deck itself. So again, link's going to be in my description. And there are some very awesome new features and upgrades to this latest release of MU Deck, which came out less than 24 hours ago. So we got new GUI, new graphical user interface that is, but sadly Yuzu and Citra are no longer supported with this, but that doesn't stop the fun. So what we're going to do then is go to download, and as we can see here, MU Deck is available for many different platforms, but we're going for Windows today, so if I just left click... And just a very quick disclaimer, it says some antivirus might flag as a Trojan. It's a false positive, so don't worry about it. And after all, MU Deck is a very trusted piece of software. And it also says don't use Edge to download this. So I'm using Google Chrome for this, so I'm going to just download beta. And this is now going to download a .cmd. So if I just left click on this... It's going to bring up a command terminal. Don't worry too much about this. It's really not as hard as it looks. Okay, so we're going to see slow DNS detected. Do you want us to change them for faster ones? I'm going to just put no for this. Windows Store. Make sure you have the app in store. So if I just press continue on this. That's going to bring us over to the Microsoft Store. Now, I've actually already got this installed because I've used MU Deck in the past. What you need to do is just make sure it's on your computer and it's installed. So once you've done that, just close down the Microsoft Store. And I'm pressing Enter on my keyboard just to bypass that. Next up, I've got Update Windows Package Manager. So if you don't have this installed, then it will likely ask you to install it. If you do have it, just go to Update. So we're now downloading the MU Deck as you can see the progress. Notification pop up on your screen, it will say Git for Windows. Just press yes on this. And we're just gonna wait patiently for this to extract. And that's it, we're now starting MU Deck, so it really isn't that bad. So every time you open up MU Deck, you will see this window pop up with a character from Super Mario World. And this is it, so we're pretty much in. Okay, so before you come to the window, I can see now it's going to ask you for an easy or a custom setup. Now, for beginners, I personally suggest doing an easy setup. And once you've set all that up and you've downloaded all your emulators and, of course, RetroArch automatically, you'll end up with this screen, as I can see. 
So first of all, let me just give you a little guide. So if we got the quick settings just here, we can configure our settings from here to use within EmuDeck, that's emulation station. So we got everything here from using auto saves to enabling bezels. And there's lots there to take a look at. And if we just drop down to manage emulators, because I installed EmuDeck using the easy way during the initial setup, I've got all the emulators here ready to go. And there's a lot here, including RetroArch. What we can actually do here is update things. For example, if I go to say Duck Station, I can then get information on, for example, BIOS missing. So it's actually gonna tell us here which BIOS files we need, or it's gonna prompt us that particular BIOS files are missing. And again, if I go to Manage Emulators and go to RetroArch, I can see many things here in RetroArch. So for example, it's telling me that BIOS files needed are PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, Sega Mega CD, and also Nintendo DS. So manage emulators, you can gain a lot from that and understand why things aren't working. Now, if we just use a slide and just drag this around halfway down, we'll have a section here of Retro Achievements. If you've not heard of Retro Achievements, it's pretty much a free app which earns us points for playing particular retro games. So I'll leave the link in my description for that. But like I say, it's free. All you need to do is sign up with the website and enter your username and password into this section here. And let me just remind you, if you ever mess up any settings and you just want it to go back to default, you've got a couple of resets just here. We've got a quick reset and custom reset. So what we need to do next is actually add this into Steam. Unless we do that, we can't actually open up the program. So what we're going to do is just go to Steam ROM Manager. And let me give you a little bit of a heads up. If you find that Steam ROM Manager isn't loading up, then just check under Manage Emulators. And from here, you can manually install it in case the setup process didn't work correctly. So if we just scroll down, we're going to find Steam ROM Manager here, and then I can install it. And we're going to close that down. And now if I go back to Steam ROM Manager, Okay, cool, so we're in. So this is what we're gonna see in Steam ROM Manager. It looks a little bit confusing, but what this allows us to do is actually put things into our Steam library so we've got easier access to it. So if I choose everything here by leaving toggle parsers enabled, everything's gonna transfer into my Steam library. If I toggle parsers off, then I can manually choose what I want sent over to Steam. So if I just left click on Emulation Station, and I then go down to add games. I'm gonna press parse. And here we go. So I'm also gonna to save to Steam. Done add and remove it entries. So if I just minimize this and open up Steam. And if you've never used Steam before, then we're just gonna go over to library and we'll find emulation station just here. And this is what we just parsed using EmuDeck. So to open this, I'm gonna just press play on it. Okay, so first thing you're likely gonna see is this, no games were found. So what I'm going to do right now is go to create directories by right pressing my D-pad and press A on that and proceed and okay. And if I just quit out of this, I then just told it to create me a directory where we can add ROMs in BIOS files. So to find this, if I just go to this PC in my C drive, I'm going to find an emulation folder. And in here, this is where we can then start adding our games and our BIOS files. For example, if I go into ROMs, I've got everything listed here supported by EmuDeck and Emulation Station from the 3DO right down to the ZX Spectrum. So for this setup guide, I'm gonna be using a Sega Mega Drive game or a Sega Genesis game. Uh, so what I need to do is go to my ROMs Mega Drive folder and I'm gonna just drag in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And I'm also gonna be doing for this setup guide some a bit more advanced but not too difficult is a PlayStation 1 game. So within that emulation ROMs folder, I'm gonna look for PSX. And here's PSX. 
So I'm going to drag my PlayStation game inside of here. Now, obviously, PlayStation 1 needs BIOS files to operate. So I've got my BIOS folder just here. And I'm going to just drag and drop my PS1 BIOS inside of that folder. Now, like I say, Yuzu is no longer operational. So what we're going to do now to open this up again is just go back to Steam and play. And here we go, so we're now inside. So as we can see, we've got Sega Mega Drive. If I press A to go inside here, I've got my Sonic the Hedgehog 2 game. And if I press B on my controller to come out and go into PlayStation, I've got my PlayStation game just here. So what can we do with this? We can actually customize how it looks. If I press Start on my controller, Main Menu. If I go down to UI Settings by pressing D-Pad Down. Theme Downloader by pressing A. Proceed, and this is going to gather a themes list. And just here we got a massive array of different themes. So lots there to choose from. So I'm actually going to show you how to do this, and I'm going to just download Showcase. So if I press A on this, it will there say download in theme. And if I press B to come out and go down to theme, in here I'm going to find my showcase theme I've just downloaded. So press A and then press B to come out. And here we go, we now got a really nice theme. Other things we can do in main menu is of course we need to set up scrapers. So my games right now don't have no artwork for them, but we can change this by going to scraper, press A. And scrape these games, I'm going to just select all games for this. Under scrape these systems, I'm going to just make sure Sega Mega Drive and Sony PlayStation are checked and press back. Now under account settings, you actually need to sign up with Screen Scraper so you can actually download artwork in preview videos. So Screen Scraper is absolutely free. Again, just like Retro Achievements, it's just a case of signing up and getting a username and password. So I'm going to just pop mine in. And once we're done putting username and password in, just press back. And if we go to content settings, we can actually select what type of artwork we want to download using Screen Scraper. So I'm going to select everything here. Just remember, if you don't have much hard drive space, then a lot of this here is going to take up a lot of space. So just be careful what you're actually downloading. If I go to back and start, it's going to then start scraping our artwork. So eventually, once that's been scraped, it's going to say two games successfully scraped in my situation. So I'm going to press OK to come out. And if I go back into one of my games. OK, so everything's working fine. Lastly, what I'm going to suggest doing is if you don't have the correct emulator or core setup to run these games, your game is going to bounce back on you. So in this case, from main menu, if we go down to other settings, alternative emulators. Now, Mega Drive Genesis Plus GX is selected as default. This is going to be running through RetroArch. So if I open up my Mega Drive game.
And to exit this, I'm going to enter the RetroWatch Quick menu by pressing my Google Stadia button. If you're using an Xbox controller, it'll be your Xbox button. PlayStation controllers will be PS button. We can do a lot through RetroWatch Quick menu, such as save states. So if I go to save states, I can then save where I am in the game. And if I enter back into that RetroWatch Quick menu again and go to load state, Boom. And we can also change the overlay. So if you notice on the side, we got the Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis sides rather than having the black sides. If you want to change this in the quick menu, if we go down to on screen overlay, it's currently on. If I turn this off and go back into the game, quick menu, resume. So for now, I'm going to just exit out of this altogether. So again, doing this through RetroWatch Quick Menu, and I'm going to go to Quit. And that's it for today's MU Deck for Windows Setup Guide. So yeah, this bit of a process to get it up and running, but once you have set it up, it's surprisingly a very good front-end system, and it's personally one of my favorites to use. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation setup guys like this one today. Also check out my retro watch playlist. Like I noted in the video, I've done a ton of retro watch individual setup guides to become a little bit familiar how it actually works. Uh, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. And also be sure to check out my merch store which is now open. Anyways, until next time, stay retro. Oh.